One of the coolest parts about reptiles in the hobby is that things go in waves. There were once very popular reptiles that now are kind of forgotten. And today we're talking about the top five used to be popular, but no one ever talks about it anymore, reptiles. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. This is going to be an interesting one because hopefully I'm going to introduce you to some species that unless you're an old timer, you probably don't even know exist. These are the reptiles that when I was young, I would see all the time and even before my time used to be really popular. You'll see them in books that are written, you know, before the internet was alive, that sort of thing. But now you don't really see them that often, but they're still really great pets and we're going to talk about why. So let's just start. Number five, gopher snakes. Now, you do see bull snakes kind of making a comeback. Because of channels like uh, Dave Kaufman, Snake Discovery, things like that, they're in the forefront again. But they used to be really popular and then they kind of died out and they are making a little bit of a resurgence, which is really cool because these are big colubrids. Now, gopher snakes are all from North America, they all the way from Canada down to Mexico. There's a bunch of different species, I think six, there might, anyway, there might be more. But some aren't as popular as others. Everyone knows about the bull snakes. My personal personal favorite are the Sonoran gopher snakes. All in all, it's a really cool, the Pitifus family is, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a really interesting family. There are a bunch of different morphs of the different species, and they're kind of unique in the fact that they kind of rear up in the way that they are, they have a strike pose that's very unique about them. The way that they hiss is very loud. They're very vocal when they get upset. And that is something they're kind of known for. Although, as you can see here, it's not that difficult to tame out a bull snake or really any gopher snake. And when I say big, I mean these guys can get up to eight feet. So big, like big, big, for real, certain species. Now it varies between, obviously, if you're getting a bull snake, it's gonna be easier to find information than if you got a Sonoran gopher snake or something like that. But as we talked about last week in the reptiles that used to be cheap and now are expensive, I imagine this is going to fit into that category in a few years because people are starting to realize how amazing these animals are, especially with bull snakes. And I do think that the price is gonna start going up. So get them now while they're cheap if you want one. Do your research first, obviously. Number four, I think turtles are unrepresented a lot of the time and musk turtles are something that used to be really popular and now aren't really all that popular at all. Musk turtles are interesting because they're so easy to take care of. They are a North American species. So I imagine when you found them in pet stores 20 years ago, when I was a kid, I used to see them everywhere all the time. They were probably wild caught or very few generations. Now you see captive breeding a lot more. Captive bred animals are always generally better because when you take things out of the wild, uh, they don't acclimate as well, parasites and things like that. The nice thing is they're small, so you can put them into an enclosure that isn't huge. I don't recommend putting them in a 40 gallon, and like they still need a big enclosure, like a big enough tank that you have a lot of water to cycle because turtles make a lot of poop and poop makes water dirty. I don't know if you knew that. Regardless, this is not a care guide. I often recommend for one or two, a 75 gallon or bigger. And I think it's really cool because you don't need a 150 gallon to house one. And you could even have a couple in the same enclosure or several if you have a bigger type enclosure. Now they are called musk turtles because they smell sort of funky. But I mean, like I said before, if your water is being cycled properly, you have a big filter, that sort of thing, or the proper type of filtration, then you're gonna be okay. You're not gonna have too many issues with the smell of them. They are insectivores, well, carnivores really, because they eat insects and they also eat invertebrates from, what am I trying to say here? Like shrimp and stuff? Anyway, as with everything, don't take this dumb bald guy talking in brief about this animal and go get one. Do your research first. They are fascinating animals. I love the fact that every time I ask for footage uh, on the Discord page, which if you're not a part of, like, if you like talking about reptiles, it's I love this place. That's where I meet all the people who send me this footage to use for the videos. Regardless, I get a ton of footage because people who have had them forever never get rid of them. This isn't an animal that you get and you're like, eh, it's boring. If you like watching things in a fish tank, there's very few turtles that are gonna be this active and because they're so small, they can really move through space because they don't need a ton of space because they're not as big as like, I'm not good at explaining things. Regardless, super cute, hilarious to watch, and again, the price is kind of rising on these. I think they're becoming more popular again, but 
I've been to a lot of pet stores, a lot of pet expos, a lot of reptile shops, and I very rarely, if ever, see these guys. Number three, these used to be the king of amphibians. Yes, we're gonna ruin the list with an amphibian, firebelly toads. Now these are a really interesting animal because they're so vibrantly colored. They're absolutely gorgeous. They move around a whole bunch. They use a lot of water space, but also need a land area. So you can have a really dynamic type enclosure for them. I remember going to a buddy's house and seeing he had this really cool 75 gallon enclosure all set up for them. And just the way that they would move through space, especially having several of them in an enclosure, because that does work out if you do your research properly. It was just really fun to watch. These guys were just so active, it was almost impossible to focus on anything else when you have this thing in the corner of the room because they're just hopping all over the place. Now there are a few species, uh, several different species to be honest. A lot of them from Asia and Europe, well, all of them, but some are from Asia, some are from Europe. Very interesting because they're not that expensive, but they make really great pets. And they do breed super easy, so I imagine that's part of it, right? Like females can have up to 100 eggs uh, once they're full, fully mature. Now, obviously not all of them will hatch, but just a testament to how many of them you can get from one single pair. And if you have pairs together, again, do your research. If you cohab any animal, they are amazing to listen to them call. The call of frogs is, that's kind of why I got into frogs so much, because I like hearing their call right if especially if you have a house that is set up so that you don't have to hear them when you're sleeping if you don't want to but absolutely amazing a side note my Amazon milk frogs have been calling now that I set them up in a new enclosure and like they sound hilarious we're gonna cap this list off with a couple of species that when I talk to newer people to the hobby they don't know these exist and it blows my mind so coming in at number two Russian rat snakes. We'll actually do it Russian rat snakes and Korean rat snakes because they're part of the same genus, they're very similar, and they both used to be very common. I remember seeing Korean rat snakes all the time. I grew up in a city where there was two really cool reptile shops or pet shops that had really cool reptile sections, and these were always a mainstay of both of those shops. It kind of baffles me that these aren't more common. They don't get really big, like similar-ish size to like a king snake or a corn snake. Similar, not the same. And they do come in different morphs, especially the Korean rat snakes. You see them in albino, available all the time for really not that expensive. I think the Russian rat snakes, at least to me, because they're black and have this yellowish banding, look like a kind of like a mangrove, I don't know, similar in my opinion. Every time I see it, I'm like, that looks like a much nicer mangrove snake, you know? I don't know. They are very interesting because the Russian rat snakes especially, they can, they're really easy to take care of. I shouldn't even say just Russians, both of them. Everything in this genus, a laffy, I think is how you pronounce it. It'll laugh, it'll laugh, it'll laugh, it'll laugh. Regardless, they're all really easy to take care of and most of them used to be common in the pet trade and now kind of aren't as common as before. And many in this genus offer up a very interesting thing to me, which is semi-arboreal behavior. I love snakes that act semi-arboreally or have uh, at least a little bit of that characteristic. So even some snakes that aren't semi-arboreal like ball pythons, I found that if I put perches in their enclosures, they always use them or almost always. And a lot of my colubrids I've started doing that with too. Not the hognose snakes though. The hognose snakes have no interest at all in climbing. They're big and chunky and now I feel like I'm being mean. One last thing that I think is cool about Russian rat snakes and I'll shut up and move on to the next one. They sometimes will hold onto their eggs for a prolonged period of time. So when they drop their eggs, they're already kind of incubated already. Sometimes after they're laid, it only takes like 40 days for them to, to hatch. Uh, to me, this is just super interesting. If you're hearing a weird noise, it's Kratos making a lot of noise in this enclosure. One of the things with large constrictors is, that always amazes me, they'll literally poop and then smear their poop all over the glass. Like I have nothing better to do than clean this every day. Okay, number one forgotten reptile. I used to see them all over the place. Now, not so common, Baird's rat snakes. Baird's rat snakes are very interesting snakes. Just the way that they look is absolutely spectacular. Now they have a bunch of different ways that they can look, their coloration changes. My favorite is kind of like this metallic looking with like the reddish head, very interesting. I just think that's spectacular to look at. And also if you're looking for a pet, which is why they're number one on the list, they have a more gentle temperament than a lot of other types of rat snakes. Now, of course, corn snakes are another great example, though corn snakes are rat snakes, but I think Baird's rat snakes are just underappreciated. They're very easy to handle. They're not very apt to bite. And overall, not a very big snake, not difficult to keep, not difficult to handle. I don't know why they fell out of 
the type of popularity that they had before. It's kind of beyond me. I could go on and on, but for much of the same reasons as the Russian and Korean rat snakes, I think these guys are just, I mean, a snake that doesn't get too big, easy to handle, eats really well, not difficult to care for. I don't know why you wouldn't want one. They're just amazing snakes in general. So there you go. Those are your top five forgotten, forgotten reptiles. What do you think? What did you see when you first got into reptiles that is no longer super duper popular? Let me know in the comments section. I would love to know. And a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. I absolutely love interacting with this platform. You guys get discounts on the merch. You guys get extra pictures and videos, things that we don't talk about. A sneak peek at this reptile room before we do the tour next month. Overall, I wanna say thank you to Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. You can be part of that too. And uh, I think that's it because we do videos twice a week. That means I'll see you on Monday.